Well, hello, hello, and welcome to Games Revisited. I am your host, Anon Jr., and we are continuing the interlude series. The new the new format seems to be working out pretty good. I got a couple things that I'm definitely going to change this go around. Uh, some refinements that uh, should help things along. Uh, unfortunately, I did not get Retro Arch, uh, the library fixed. It, it's a little bit harder than uh, that I than I realized. So th this is my little note to you: if um, if you're getting into the the ROMs thing and you're trying to do you're trying to do all all the fun play play all the games of your console youth and uh, and uh, really have fun with the games. Um, use Retro Arch if you have more than one system that you want to emulate, particularly if it's going to be on like a media center PC where everybody's going to have access to it and that kind of thing. And you just want one program to contain them all. Setup is going to be a beast. But once you get it working, it's beautiful. Um, if all you're doing is one particular game system, uh, look into some of the specialty emulators for just that system. For example, uh, if I had had just a little more time today, I would have reset the live streaming stuff off to the side here um, that I'm pointing to that you can't see because my hand's off camera. Um, I, I would have set that up to, um, to, to use BSNES instead of RetroArch, and you just use that system for uh, for today. But uh, if wishes were fishes, we'd all cast nets. So with that out of the way, we are going to start off with uh, some time wasters and that sort of thing. And unfortunately, it didn't show up on the list, so we're going to go back to uh, the, the, the cumbersome load content. The users, see users run, run users run. Oh wait, no. Uh, down into Dropbox, go to our SNES folder, and we're going to pull up the game that came with the SNES, Super Mario World. This was a, a fun little time waster. It was one of the, uh, it's one of the games that just about everybody who had an SNES played because, well, you got it with the console and I'll admit it was fun I mean I don't want to admit that it was fun but it was fun so uh, let's go ahead and get started as you can tell by the uh, the little copyright date we're talking 90 91 um, let me double check my notes yes Super Mario World came out in 1990 November 1990 and uh, it is similar in style to all the previous Mario games, although more of these had uh, game save states, so you could definitely pick up where you left off, and it, it, a little bit different. Uh, you know, welcome, Dinosaur Land, oh, yada, yada, yada. Bowser's at it again, because of course he is. Um, come on, just get me to the game, game. And like they did with Mario 3, you start off with the overworld map. You've got different routes you can take throughout the island. And uh, this is where we finally learn about Yoshi. Um, a new critter to worry about. He eats lots of things and all sorts of special things. You start getting into um, the different colored Yoshis have different things that they can do and can't do. But uh, the basics of Mario, running, jumping, coin collecting, is all there. I don't know, I really had to duck on that one. But now that you have more buttons, you've got more things, like uh, running is its own separate button. you got a spin jump that does a little bit more. And, uh, yeah, all sorts of fun stuff. All right, I'm trying to keep a better eye on time this time, because uh, that was... Uh, one of the fun issues I ran into the last go round, I got a little too lost in the games and started losing track of things. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot. If you notice up at the top, that mushroom that I picked up uh, became an extra, a little extra bit on my bar there. So 
you could store up little power-ups that would uh, drop down later. If I remember right, there was a button combination you could do that would uh, that would drop them. But um, <laughs> the downside of uh, trying to trying to spread yourself to all the different game systems. Point of advice, you can hold an extra item in the top bar. <laughs> okay, to use it, press the select button. There we go. Problem solved. <laughs> I forgot that they get, again, um, like most of the time, they, they did the the usual World 1-1 stuff where you learned about the game. You had a chance to get used to ducking and sliding and jumping and all sorts of stuff, and this is probably going to be point of advice. To pick up a shell, use the X or Y button. To throw a shell look upwards, look up and let go of the button. Okay, so X or Y, and then I could probably go up there. Oh, <laughs> all that, all that. <laughs> Oh, oh. Oh, my timing. Oh, these guys. Oops. Okay. I don't want to get too, too lost into that. So Super Mario World, the, a fair amount of time was spent playing this game, beating this game, all the little special worlds. There were uh, little hidden spots, like if you did the Yellow Switch Palace, then it would do certain things and actually have an effect on other levels in the game. And so the route you took and what you did at each of the stations would uh, help advance the game in different ways, and, and that really made it a fun and interesting game. And, uh, yeah, uh, many, many hours were burned on Super Mario World. <laughs> yes, and breeding the different colored Yoshi. Um, since I'm trying to fit a number of time wasters into a single one, I am going to go ahead... Close that so I got my notes up there and we're going to close content. We're going to back up. We're going to load some new content. We're going to go through the laborious. Actually, you know what? Let me check and see. Yes. All right. Next on the trip, a game that I spent more time playing than I care to mention. The Lost Vikings. <laughs> Lost Vikings came out in 1993. It was produced by Blizzard. Matter of fact, uh, it was subsequently released for Amiga, MS-DOS, Genesis, uh, Game Boy Advance, and right now, as of the time of this recording, the Lost Vikings is available as a free download that you can run in DOSBox. I didn't realize it, but there was actually a sequel that was made in 97 that has the same three characters, same basic setup, uh, but a couple of different specials. But it, it's still your basic um, side-scrolling platformer thing. I'm going to try to skip, uh, yep, let's skip through the perfunctory talking stuff. Basically, you're three Vikings, you're abducted by aliens, and this is, uh, this is your trip through stuff. <laughs> I have a bad feeling about this. Uh, matter of fact, in some of the Blizzard games, you you can actually play the Lost Vikings. I'm trying to remember what, what one it was. Um, was it... Uh, oh, it's one of those games that I, I, I hear the, the rapid-fire obsessive clicking of people playing it. Um, tower defense type games. Uh, no bother. Anyway... The idea is that you got to get all three of these guys alive to the exit. Almost bit it there. Uh, they each have different things that they can do. Uh, Eric the Swift can run and jump and break things with his head. And instead of doing a save game system, you just got a new password at the top of each level. Um, which... 
help manage within some of the limitations of uh, what the game and game engine couldn't couldn't do. Uh, you look awfully happy. What are you? Are you the janitor? <laughs> What's a janitor? And how did I get here? Oh yeah, and, and <laughs> all these characters have fun little snarky bits and bobs and other things. Skipping through a fair amount of the story, but uh, I leave that for another. No, no. I already did that. Oh, meant to do that because <laughs> we need the bombs. And oh, there we go. Helps if you use the right button. And in a lot of these, there were secret, uh, secret entrances and exits and things. Right. Is this the smart way to go? Yeah, this is the smart way to go about it. Someone set us up the bomb. Oh, wait, no, that was an earlier game system. <laughs> Security's gonna be looking for you. Yeah. And, oh man, this was such a fun game. Many, many hours playing this game. I've beaten it more than a few times. Um, and it was unique for its time in playing the three different characters and doing uh, a different take on puzzle games. Particularly the side-scrolling type. Duck. Alright, I'm going to finish up this last level and then I will get on to the next one. So I'm trying to get... <laughs> trying to get four... Four games in on this one. Let's see. Was this one of the secrets I can I was talking about? Yeah, there we go. I still remember. Each character could carry up to four items. You could pass items from uh, character to character, so long as they were standing near each other. Whichever item was selected was the one that you would use when you hit the appropriate use button. Some of the puzzles were maddening and frustrating for a variety of reasons. There's always an open question, who do you want to lead with? to me. I will lead the way. He wouldn't know which way to lead if you had a map. <laughs> oh, so much fun. And, and they traveled to different areas, so you do three, four levels uh, of, you know, the space thing, then you do three or four levels of this weird prehistoric fantasy area. Uh, you did a few in ancient Egypt and, yeah, a few different levels at, at different places, different puzzles, increasing difficulty, um, more and more interesting guys. And again, if you, if all three of them did not make it to the end alive, guess what? You get the pleasure of starting the level over again. It wouldn't surprise me if I still had the notebook sitting somewhere in storage that had all the passwords for each of the levels. Because as I said, I played through it more than a few times. I, I even had a couple little notes, uh, you know favorite levels that, that I like to go through just because it was fun. Um, 
So, with that, let's go ahead and close the content. Let's go close that. And, ooh, good. It's there. Third on our, what is it when it's four of them? Our, I don't know, however you want to do it. Mega Man X. This is the Mega Man that I played far more than the original uh, because I, I owned it for a lot longer than I ever owned the original. And I did have a little bit more fun with it. Um, <laughs> Hello, the 80s called. Well, no, early 90s. Came out in North America in 1994. And it was an attempt to reboot Mega Man. So... While you've got a similar looking character with uh, similar capabilities, it's intended to be a, a different Mega Man. It's not that Mega Man, it's the other one. You, know, you can still charge up your blaster and do all that sort of fun stuff. Kill the guys, side scroll adventure, not die. But you had nice things with uh, some of the jumping and the ability to grab onto the wall. But uh, all in all, it is your basic Mega Man. Everything you know and love about the game franchise. Uh, simpler story. All right, I guess it's the same simple story no matter which way you go about it. Yeah, still not good at talking and playing at the same time. <laughs> We'll run through this real quick. Mm. There we go. Right, let's see if I can do this without embarrassing myself. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Still doesn't feel right without a proper SNES controller, but uh, make do with what we can. Oh. There we go. for the basic feel. The nice thing about this version of Mega Man as opposed to some of the earlier ones is in addition to certain bosses attacks being more effective against other other bosses um, the order in which you killed them would also affect things like the environment. Um, if you killed Chill Penguin, the ice guy, before you took on the, the whatever his name was in the forge. I'll show you in a minute. Um, it would actually freeze over the lava, and it would prevent certain things from combusting, making that level a lot easier uh, than if you had done, done it the other way around. And so it gave you some nice options for that. There were different power-ups that gave you extra abilities, you know, better jumps, better blasters, better skill. Oh, wait, no, no, there was no power-up that helped with that. Oh, no, it's the boss fight for the first level. Dun-dun-dun! I'm actually not going to try too hard because uh, you're not actually meant to win this battle. It, it was one of those things that really frustrated me the first time through. Um, and I forgot about it when I was getting ready for, for this series. You're not meant to win that one. There is no winning it. It is literally unbeatable. No matter how well you play, he's still going to beat you. He's still going to mock you. You can still skip through all the dialogue. <laughs> So we can get to the part that I wanted to show before getting in our uh, number four for Time Wasters. I 
guess I'm not powerful enough to defeat him. The mopey characters from the 90s. Yada yada yada. Blah blah blah. Chat and dialogue. Very thin story. And again, I put this in the time wasters because that that's what this one was. It was a way to run through the game. Uh, you know, it was a side-scroller shooter. Something you pick up when you got time to kill. Uh, and depending... And, and <laughs> instead of a save state and battery and all that good fun stuff, they had a rather interesting password. So you would need to jot down this particular matrix of numbers and and that would be your password for uh, for the next time you played because remember you could do the bad guys in any order you wanted so uh, it's not like you could have a single a single password so this is a, this is a numeric hash of all the different variables to keep track of what power ups you've picked up what ones and um, so in a great many respects, it is still your basic Mega Man. You you pick a you pick a bad guy in a themed a themed bad guy in a themed environment, and uh, and then you went at it. And the nice thing with Mega Man X is if you took care of this guy, it would freeze out a lot of the hazards on this guy, and so on and so forth throughout throughout the uh, throughout the game. So you had to make a lot of decisions about who you're going to tackle first and. What order you want to take them, and all that good fun stuff. All right, that's it for this one. I got one more I want to do before I cut out for the break. Now, again, for those of you on the live stream, um, it's going to be just a quick break while I change change game titles in Twitch, which I really should have been doing all along, and. Um, for those of you watching on YouTube, I do the live stream all the way through, and I'm trying to break it down into little 20, 25 minute uh, segments, and I'll release those throughout the week. So if you don't want to wait, you really want to see what's going on, watch live on twitch.tv or mixer.com, whichever one you prefer. There are links to both of those below. If you are watching live and you're not able to catch the whole thing for whatever reason, that's okay. They'll get uploaded to YouTube and there will be a link down in the description below for the channel. That'll take you to the YouTube. All right, let's see. Is the last one in here? Yes, it is. Donkey Kong Country. Yeah. Came out in 1994. It is a platformer developed by Rare and... Um, Kind of, sort of, along the same line of um, the other Donkey Kong games. It um, it was a, a bit of an experiment in using 3D generated sprites. So you'll notice instead of the, the very cartoony 2D, 3D type setup, it, it actually starts feeling a little bit more 3D or as... 3D as uh, 94 could uh, could stand to be. All right, and as you can tell by the save states, you've got uh, you've got a battery, so it will save uh, up to three games as you go along. You've got the nice little overworld map, uh, very reminiscent of Mario. Uh, again, th this is where you start to see the influences of Super Mario Brothers 3 and on uh, game development in the game world. And much like those games, it is one of those things where uh, side scroll, you look for stuff. The the very thin story, such as it is, is Kong's banana horde has been stolen, and now you're going to get it back. Boom. Story done. <laughs> you pick up barrels, you jump on stuff, you spell out Kong, you pick up bananas. Oh, wrong button. I got it. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. You really wanted to get those balloons. There we go. That's what that button was. What I was thinking of. 
Oops. Yeah. It was a fun one, and like many games, it had little secret levels and different areas and all sorts of other fun stuff that would help you along. You get to pick up the animal critters. You know, the balloons were your extra lives. If you got really special about doing uh, jumps off of people, you, you could actually get a little more elevation on, on your jump. And it was a fun game, and you just go from level to level and work your way through the overworld. You'd get to special little bonus areas with special little bonus things and, you know, all sorts of, of hidden... hidden what's its TNT. A perennial favorite. Especially if you hit it in the right spot. And th this was a good way to kill some time. If you, you just wanted to play a game, you didn't want to think too much about it. Because it's your basic side-scroller. I remember this one took me a while to beat for some reason. I just don't remember why. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Some of the hidden... The stuff hidden in the... Oop. There we go. It almost looks like I know what I'm doing. Almost. <laughs> no, that wasn't. There's one somewhere around here. Oh. <laughs> okay. Anyway. You get the idea. And this is definitely one of the more interesting games of the era because in no small part because of the uh, the 3D rendered sprites. It it spawned a couple of sequels along the same lines where they refined the graphics, they refined the engine. You know, these days this looks horribly, horribly dated. When you compare it to, you know, Fallout 4 and The Witcher, or even Halo. Because um, you figure Halo came out in 99, 2000, somewhere thereabouts. So we're, we're, we're talking less than a decade difference and, and a huge change uh, in games. Or, or if you want to stick within the same console instead of skipping consoles like that. You know, look, look at this and compare it to, you know, Breath of the Wild on the Switch now. And, man, we've come a long, long way. All right. So I'm going to close that content. That is actually going to be the end of our little Time Wasters segment. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to get a couple things ready. And this is where I say thank you for watching along. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe because I am pacing the content out. New episodes will go up each day. Um, so tomorrow this episode will go up. Well, if you're watching live, it's tomorrow to you. If you're watching on YouTube, it's today or yesterday or who knows how long ago it was. But um, six days out of the week, a new episode will run, run will be released and on uh, the seventh day I will stream again and do and record a bunch more so subscribe get that way you'll get notified when things happen if you like what we're doing if you like what's going on leave a like if you got quips queries quotes comments complaints or other quandaries leave those down in the comments below and as you can see you could also chat live with me and get a little more interactive feedback by watching on twitch.tv or mixer.com whichever you prefer thursdays at 6 p.m u.s eastern so with that i'm going to say to you on youtube good night and to those of you watching live give me just a minute to switch a few things up